Welcome guys, so I'm just doing the uh, Phantom Sealed Midweek Magic. So the set is uh, Midnight Hunt. I haven't actually played Sealed uh, from this set before. I've done the uh, drafts though. Okay. So you get a couple of rare lands. I don't know how useful those are going to be. We get Siphon Insight, so you can sort of uh, steal your opponent's cards and play them. And it has flashback, so that's quite good. Uh, so that's in blue and black. We also have a Ludovic Necrogenius in blue and black. Which can transform into something from the graveyard. Um, yeah, it becomes a 4-4 version of something in the Brick graveyard. And it gets the number of plus one, plus one counters equal to the number of cards exiled. So you could exile multiple cards and make him bigger. And uh, yeah, he also mills a card when he enters the battlefield and when he attacks. So that could be really cool. Uh, we have Vadric Astral Archmage, and I have made a deck with this guy. So um, instant, and sor instant and sorcery spells you cast cost X less to cast, where X is Vadric's power. Whenever day becomes night and night becomes day, he gets a plus one, plus one counter. It's quite interesting. I, I made a deck with pump spells and X spells, um, which is quite fun. You pump his uh, power to, you know, 10 or something, and then you, you can do a 10 point X spell. Uh, Curse of Silence. I think this one is not going to be usable. Yeah, you've got to choose a card name. Spells with the chosen name cast two more. Uh, so totally useless and sealed. Right, I think I will look at blue-black to start with. So we'll add these two cards. That's the basis of our deck. Um, there were lands as well, let's see. Deserted Beach might be useful if you want to splash white. Evolving Wilds is definitely going to be useful. So we'll just start off and look at blue and black. So I'm looking, looking for bombs, removal and evasion creatures, basically. It's the uh, the bread system is uh, it's uh, you also have aggro and dross, but I tend to leave those to the last. Also, we're looking for cheap uh, kind of card draw and mana fixing, so considers really good for that. Fading hopes a good removal spell. Larder zombie might be all right, and uh, otherworldly gaze. Surveil three, and it's got flashback, so. In a pinch, this can help you. This can, yeah, this can help you find your next land, or just get rid of land off the top. It might work out quite well. Locked in the cemetery is a good removal spell. Shipwreck sifters. Yeah, draw and discard. This is more of an aggro card, so we'll come back to it. Then the component collector can uh, tap things down when it goes from day to night. It's quite good. It's like a removal card, so I think we will consider that. Dissipate is a counter spell. Organ Horde is fantastic, so you look at the top three cards and put one into your hand. That's absolutely great. We want to splash white there's uh, faithful mending i'm not sure we want to do that let me look at black oh black's good look we've got infernal grasp and olivia's midnight ambush so a couple of decent removal spells right ecstatic awakener we can sacrifice another creature draw a card and then this becomes a four four so that's pretty good We'll come back to that. Rotten Reunion exiles uh, cards from the graveyard, so you make, you make a dis decay zombie. It's quite good. 
Uh, Blade Brand is uh, a cantrip that gives something death touch. That's effectively a removal spell. I think that's quite good. Then Vampire Interloper has evasion, so it's your classic 2-1 flyer for 2. Arrogant Outlaw does a 2-point drain life. Hobbling Zombie has death touch, so that's effectively another removal spell. Uh, then we've got Baneblade Scoundrel. Big, a big creature, basically. Diagraph Horde is pretty awesome because it makes two decay zombies. And you can uh, exile two cards from the graveyard. So I think I think that is worth uh, considering. I think that's just very good value. Uh, we've got the Morkrut Behemoth. Uh, Southern Six Menace. So it's got Evasion. I think that is our top-end creature. Because we're probably going to try and make some zombies. Uh... And now we want to just fill out the deck, so I'm thinking we drop Otherworldly Gaze, because it doesn't give us card advantage, it's just card selection, it costs mana, um, arguably we're better off with another creature in that slot. I, I would say, because we've got, we've got Consider, we've got Fading Hope does a scry, there's a, there's a bit of card selection going on. That we need uh, we need to find six cards. So I think Larda Zombie can do the job. We've got to think about shipwreck sifters. So if any of you discard a spirit card or card would disturb, you put a, put a plus one plus one counter. But surveilling doesn't count as discarding. I don't think these are going to work with the deck. I don't think we've got any any discard, it's all sort of mill mill effects going off let's forget that one, but I think Larder Zombie is probably worth it Awakener's definitely very good indeed let's take that and then Arrogant Outlaw is fine I think the Scoundrel is fine as well Rotten Reunion is all right, I think. And then we can take one otherworldly gaze just to smooth out our draws. Quick look at the other colors, see if we're missing anything amazing. Uh, so white has a sun gold barrage. I like Ambitious Farmhand as well. Two Clarion Cathars, uh, they make a 1-1. A one, one. Silversmith's quite good. Oh yeah, Dawnheart, Dawnheart Wardens can be quite good. There's the Flesh Taker as well in black-white. Uh, which is a pretty cool card. Sa a Sacrifice Outlet. Whenever you sacrifice another creature, gain one life and scry one. Uh, but we'll look at red, just in case there's anything amazing here. It's one burn spell. Right, a couple of burn spells. Yep, yeah, probably okay. Quite a few cards to choose from, actually. Perforate is not bad. Well, I'm not sure. Ah, it's not the one I thought it was. Uh, and look at green. I like Bird Admirer. It's a good um, reach creature. Eccentric Farmer's really good for hitting land drops. Another decent reach creature with some value. Yeah, that's quite good. Rise of the Ants is pretty good. Hmm. Yeah, there's some, there's some more right cards there. And there's artifacts as well in this set. So, 
I forgot about the artifacts. I think we drop a otherworldly gaze for a silver bolt. It's another good removal spell. Right, I think I'll call that end of part one and have a bit of a think about that. Okay, yeah, that was uh, that was pretty simple. Uh, I've not changed anything about the deck. I think I'll keep stick to 17 lands. I think that's probably about right. We've got a bit of a top end here. We've got three, five drops. Good opening hand. We have our Ludovic. Couple of removal spells, and uh, we do have a five drop, but we've got three lands. We should probably, hopefully, be able to play that on curve. Go. Play the Ludovic. Takes a land off the top. We've drawn our counter spells, so I can probably just hold up my mana. We'll see if he does anything spectacular this turn. Okay, tapping at the window. So he's he's into sort of card selection already. Not too scary. Uh, we can start attacking with Ludovic, I believe. And we dissipate. Pretty easy decision. Now we could lock this guy in the cemetery. Yeah, you've got to do five to do Ludovic's ability, because you've got to exile one creature for it to... Yeah, X can't be zero. In fact, it, it spells it out. Uh, now, we're, we could do Locked in the Cemetery on this. Uh, I'll play the Awakener. I think I won't. I won't do Locked in the Cemetery. I'll wait for an, something uh, more impressive. And I've got how many creatures? I've got four cards in the graveyard. If I've got five cards in the graveyard, this works. Okay, he's got a big creature again. So we, we grasp that one. Cool, Organ Hoarder. So we can actually just find our fifth land with uh, Organ Hoarder, I think. Wow, Candlelit Cavalry is a good one. 
Uh, I think, on balance, I might just trade with this Lamholt Harrier. It's one less creature contributing to Coven. If this gets Coven, it gets uh, Trample. So yeah, I think I think that's fine. Now Ludovic, I could exile two creatures. That would make him a six-six. And he'd get Menace uh, if I exile the Behemoth. It seems pretty cool to do that. And he's red-green. It He's going to struggle to deal with a big creature. Obviously I've got the other stuff in my hand, but uh, I can attack with Ludovic this turn. This seems good. It's a rare opportunity to actually use his ability. So we go for, how about Behemoth, Organ Hoarder, copy the Menace creature I think. Could just follow up with another Behemoth next turn, sacrifice the Awakener. Wow, he has he has so many big creatures. Okay, so locked in the cemetery now taps things down because oh wait, and I just no, it does because I uh, I have still have seven things in the graveyard. I'll just double check that. Glad I held on to this card. <laughs> oh wow, Ward 3. Glad I had enough mana for that. <laughs> I didn't actually, I assumed I would be able to pay that ward. Uh, okay, right, attack with this guy. But that's a lot of big creatures. We killed the Tyler's Hauler. As well, we ex we countered the tavern ruffian. Another tavern ruffian, nice. More tapping at the window to find more big creatures, I guess. That can get trample. Oh, it's back! It's back to daytime. That's uh, he can still double block and kill this, obviously. Uh, I like the idea of Digraph Horde. I'll gobble up the unnatural moonrise and one of the tappings out the window. Play the swamp, and this guy can sacrifice a decay zombie. Yeah, let me get through. He's got to block both of them. Plug and Nasari. So this is from the new set. 5-4, beginning of your upkeep, each player exiles cards from the top of their library until they exile an online card. An opponent chooses a non-land card exiled this way. You may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled this way without paying the mana costs.
Okay, your opponent chooses one of the non-land cards, so they can either stop you casting your card or their card. You may cast up to two spells from among the other cards exiled this way, without paying the mana costs. Well, that's that's confusing me. I'm wondering, how do you end up ever casting two of the spells if you stop exiling when you exile a non-land card? Anyway, in interesting card. I'll I'll take it. Okay, we have no black mana, uh, we have no card draw stuff, but we've got one removal spell. And I've got nine black sources in the deck, and I'm going second, so I draw that extra card. I'm going to risk it. At least that's got zero power, that's uh, all I can say there. He's got a silver bolt, so he's quite reactive so far. That's good news. <laughs> Might have more time to draw a swamp. Oh, we are going to consider. Let's do that straight away. Does a fourth island get us anywhere? No, I think we get rid of it to get closer to the first swamp. Ah, right. Yeah, so he is out of range of Silver Bolt. There's our Swamp. Good. Okay. Now we can pop this Trapper, but it's only a 1-3 a creature. I'll go with the Arrogant Outlaw, I think. It can't stop the... Oh, right, yeah, I forgot there was a condition on this card. I have to actually um, have done damage for that to trigger. Never mind. And he's dead. Right, so I think we lock the 3-4 in the cemetery. Play. I think I'll go for the uh, the interloper here. Force him to use the silver bolt on it. I think. Rather than Ludovic. Oh, this becomes a five six. That's quite scary, actually. down to one card. He is going to flip this next turn. Uh, but it does, I think it gets flipped. Uh, it's tapped when it's flipped, basically. Right, I think I want Component Collector here. We might, there's a chance I can tap down his big creature with this. And also it's starting the day-night cycle, so we can maybe flip it to night and um, get the minus 13, minus 13. We have to do nothing, don't we, to flip it to night. Oh, okay, let's... Uh, oh, that's interesting. 
we'll tap you down. Let's see if you tap the interloper in response. Yeah. Okay. Uh, decline. Yeah, that was confusing me. It is tap or untap. Which is kind of interesting. How, uh, it is, so it is night time. He is tapped out. I think we just take out his big creature. I don't know what his um, answer would be, potentially, when he untaps, but uh, I don't even want to consider that. I don't want it to be a possibility. Okay, there's a blade brand. So it might be time to blow up the trapper with the uh, silver bolt. Obviously I'm a little bit restricted on mana. We've only managed to draw one more land. There, go, there goes there goes a fifth land off the top. Yeah, we've milled a couple of lands so far. Oh yeah, uh, he still had this, his silver bolt. I don't know why I... Well, it doesn't matter. It's uh, he's, He can't use it for his... On the interloper now. Right, the the mob is probably a bit scary. Okay, let's tap that one. Right, let's remind myself what this chaplain of arms does. It becomes a two one flying first strike. Oh, that's a disaster if that dies. <laughs> um, okay, so we'll, we'll attack with our flyer. Rotten Reunion is instant speed. I don't want him to untap and cast that in response, so I'm going to do that now. And uh, end the turn. Do want to pop something with that? No, I think I'll, I'll hold my silver bolt for a bit longer. Burn the accursed on that guy. That's fair enough. Right, so to be super safe, I think we could take out an unruly mob before it gets out of control. But to be, um, in terms of, sort of aggression, killing the trapper might be good. No, I think I think it's got to be the mob. Let's slow down his clock.
As long as that's just hitting me for one each turn, it's not a big deal, really. We're kind of hoping he casts something big that I can feel good about counterspelling. Four three, yeah, that's that's big enough to counterspell. <laughs> Uh, again, it's up to the organ hoarders to try and find land for me. Land number five. Okay, he's got his big creature. I suppose I want to hold up mana for Bladebrand. Oh, that's a good point. He can tap down my blocker. And get through with uh, eight damage. So Behemoth, yeah, so I think it means I probably end up chomp blocking here. And so I don't care so much about Diagraph Horde. That gives me some extra Decay Zombies, which could be useful. We'll take away Unruly Mob. Take away, burn the accursed. That's tapped. You can just tap the other blocker, swing in for seven. Not attacking. That is very interesting. Okay, we hit another swamp, and that's important. We can do a five drop and still have blade brand mana. That's getting tapped. Okay. Uh, no, we're gonna we're gonna sacrifice a creature. It's good the extra zombies. I think that that persuaded him to not attack. He thought he might he wouldn't get lethal, and I might have a lethal swing back. Okay, yeah, this is a card draw enchantment. 
whenever you cast a white spell, gain one life. So he wants to be above 10 life, greater than or equal, or equal to 10 life. Okay, pass to attackers. Not attacking, okay. So we will, we might as well do Rotten Reunion. And get rid of, let's say, an Immolation. Okay, Evolving Wilds will take a land out of our deck. We want that. Uh, let's go to combat and see what he wants to do here. Tap down Behemoth, that's not a surprise. We'll go in with the Interloper, just chip away a bit more. And it's another Behemoth. Sacrifice the zombie. Doesn't draw a card. That's tap down. Okay, all right. I mean, that can get pumped up a couple of times, can it? Five damage. So, Organ Hoarder, I think, jumps in the way there. Actually, let, let's. Let's make him spend all his mana. Let's block like that and that. Okay. Okay, and Blade Brand, the. Yeah. Ah, that's, I believe that's my first Thran Spider. So it's a 2 4 reach. Gives you and your opponent a tapped power stone. I can also dig for artifacts. That does seem good. Right, we'll go for the, uh, the cosmetic. This is usually where things go a bit wrong. Okay, opponent goes first again, got two swamps, we get to draw an extra card, it dissipates pretty dead because it's double blue. I, I say we keep it. Yeah, we found the island. My faith uh, was uh, rewarded. We do want to keep digging for more lands, I think. Especially a second island. Oh yes, the siege zombie. So this is good in a uh, a deadlock. Right, silver bolt. Kind of want that. Want to block the siege zombie with that. Let's take it. 
And we draw an island, that's really good. Um, let's have the component collector. We'll have a nice big blocker to start with. Right, um, he's got a three, a two, and a one. So that thing gets lifelink. I think that's a problem. So, I mean, we could trade off with a three, two lifelink. I think, uh, I think I'm justified in using a silver bolt here. They can start pinging me with the siege zombie, of course, but Yeah, hey, yeah, this this is a pretty good one. So this turns into a two-one flyer if it dies, uh, if it well, if it gets disturbed after it's died. I think we'll do a, do my trick of organ doing organ hoarder to try and find land number five. There's a removal spell, uh, but that. That thing he's got has got vigilance, so that said, I'm probably gonna fill my graveyard with a few things. I'll just I'll just take the land. And then I can always play this guy as well, which seems good. That guy again. The one you really don't want to kill. Right, chuck the wall in the way. Don't want to kill that guy either. Uh, we could hold up Dissipate here, and we've got Rotten Reunion, so it's... Rotten Reunion and Ecstatic Awakener. It's not actually Sorcery Speed. That's pretty cool. Yeah, let's, let's do nothing. Right, let's tap something down. Morning Patrol. You know what, I've got Rotten Reunion. 
I can take out something bef uh, before he disturbs it. So we'll have, to, I'll, yeah, I'll have to reveal the fact I've got Rotten Reunion. And use the Awakener. Right, we've got a 4-4 four, four creature we want to attack with, I think. But we'll hold the 3-2 back. Draws a card off that one. Right, I've got, yeah, six mana. He lost a life that turn. I think I can, uh, yeah, I want to play the Outlaw now. Seems good. I've still got my Dissipate mana up. So he's got the Cigar to Splendor. Yeah, okay. Not happening. Well, it will dissipate that. Feels like it's going to be difficult to get through with damage because he's got so many creatures and they come back with Disturb as well. So that's probably going to get him a lot of card advantage. This thing disturbs for four. I think we can chuck the outlaw in the way. Seems like a good trade. And I could do that at instant speed, right? Let's play... No, let's first attack with a 4-4. Four, four. Then we'll play the Scoundrel. And then end the turn. Road time. Hmm. Yep. Necrosynthesis. Okay, it gets bigger when other creatures die. And then you you get card advantage when it dies. Okay. Pretty cool card. Uh, I'm just going to Rotten Reunion. Here's Morning Patrol. Uh, tap that guy down. Do you want to tap everything to do me a point of damage? Uh, 
He does. Let's not untap him. Let's decline that. <laughs> okay, so let's play this for full cost. Swing like that. I mean, I could swing in with the zombie as well. Just going to get through. Oh! Yeah, sorry, it's not just his creatures, it's any creature. So this thing is going to get out of control soon. Flesh Taker, oh yeah. That's good in the Yours of Sacrifice deck. So this is now a 2 2 first strike. Yep. And that becomes a 3 3 now. But he could have done that at instant speed. But he wants, I guess he wants this thing in play. And yeah, he can sacrifice for one mana. So then that will go, become a 4 4 first strike and kill my demon. So that's annoying. Uh, I think I'll swing with the 7 6. Uh, my, I could hold off on the Diagraph Horde. Now, I'll switch it to night time. I'd get to tap down this creature. And then his d defenses might have a few problems next turn. Ah, okay. He's going to do it that way. Uh, I think I want to kill the first striker, though. He can pump that to 4-4 four, four first strike. That'll become a 4-4 four, four as well. So... Lost his siege zombie. And he gets to dig through four, the top four cards. The good news is I've, I do have still have Diagraph Horde and I can get rid of that thing from the graveyard. And uh, probably the cultist is good. And then we end the turn that. Jaren, Corrupted Bishop, so something special happens when he's on exactly 13 health. It's really complicated. Uh, bidding of your own step if you have 13 in life, you may pay 6 and transform into the 6-6 six, six Flying Trample lifelink. He can give things lifelink. So he can give... Right, he doesn't... The thing is, he doesn't have enough mana to transform this in his end step. Okay, he can turn that into a 4-4 four, four sac and sacrifice that. Uh, however, can I not just let it through and attack with everything? Um, okay. Well, this thing's... I suppose it's quite scary. Let's Infernal Grasp it. He can sacrifice it in response, I suppose. He gains a point of life. Get these two points of life, actually. And I think just swing in with everything. It 
actually adds up to 15 damage, so he's going to trade off there. Okay. But he goes back up to 4. That's a nice big uh, wall. Okay, that's a three, four, a four, four now. He can smack me with it. It's got vigilance. Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. He's putting up a bit of a fight this here. Um, so he can make this a six, six. Let's attack with everything and see what happens. It's going to sack the beggar, right? Or he, or is he? No, he's not sacrificing the beggar. Yes, he is. Okay, scrying. Uh, he gets plus two, plus two. I'll make him a lose two, minus two, minus two, and we'll trade off like that. But he then gets this back, and it's a four, four flying vigilance. Oh good, we've got Blade Brand, we're just swinging like that. Good top deck. Trade them off. And in turn. Can the component collector do it? Sunset Revelry, oh my god. Good stabilizing card. And he's got a 3-3 creature. And he's got a 1-2 creature as well. Okay, and I'm going to swap. Okay. Well, 9, 10, 11 land we've been through. I'll make it 12. There's only 5 more land in the deck and 13 cards. So, uh, no attacks. And, yeah, we will tap that thing down. Just thinking, it's, there's an argument. Oh, he's got Jaren back because he got cruel from the Sarah, uh, the seller, and he can give things life link with this. Nice. That, that is a good recovery from having nothing on the board a couple, a couple of turns ago. Uh, sure. Let's do that. Right, uh, doesn't matter. That's going to give him card advantage every time. Oh well, we've got Fading Hope, I suppose. Let's us scry. I think pretty good if he does transform Ormondal the Corruptor. Uh, yeah, let's, let's tap that down again. We are, we could have done a fading hope to stop him getting the Givoni trigger. He made field a creature card, money value three, top, from the top four cards. So he is going to absolutely, 
go through his library uh, rate of knots I'm only on seven life now. Uh, take a one one counter off the board, maybe. It's not much, but it's something. Okay, evolving wilds to the bottom of the deck. life gain. Oh, there's Ludovic. What can Ludovic do? Alright, let's... Because you can activate him the turn he comes into play. Which is fun. You can land off the top as well. Uh, I just... We don't have any, obviously, uh, haste creatures, is what I was going to say. Let's count, uh, so this should tell me how many creatures I've got in here. Ten? No, that can't be right. One, two, three, four, five. I'll make it five creatures in the graveyard. Plus one to Ludovic for five, because that seems like fun. Which one? We want the one with uh, Menace, please. Um, I could attack for one, but I don't think I want to do that. And does he just get through with three damage anyway? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, he, he just taps that down, of course. That's the other problem. Yeah. Okay, good game. Still, I made the biggest o uh, Olag ever. Yeah, Crawl from the Cellar is definitely very good. So yeah, I probably just, in hindsight, went a little bit too aggressive. I could have maybe held back for a turn and used the Olivia's Midnight Ambush a bit more effectively. Because it, it kind of, it two for one to me. I, I, I lost a creature and that removal spell to take out his Flesh Taker. Which maybe wasn't such a good idea. Uh, yeah. Let's keep going. So, yeah. As usual, getting the cosmetic proves uh, a bit more challenging. Okay, let's keep that. It's a bit of a reactive hand. Got no creatures until maybe turn five. Oh, there's Ludovic. That's nice. I think, yeah, just counter is three drop. No 
no. Oh yeah, they do have a larder zombie in the yard, but that would give Ludovic defender, which isn't ideal. Right, this is going to ramp him out. Locked in the cemetery. We've, we've got five cards, so we can tap this down. I'm going to go ahead and do it. Could slow out, slow his big creature by a turn. Uh, I probably don't need to bounce that right now. Yeah. So next turn we'll play the Behemoth. I think swing in with Ludovic. And we've got Fading Hope if we need. He'll take let it through because he's worried about death touch. That's fair enough. Uh, I'm I'm going to go ahead and fading hope now to stop six damage because that that seems like a good deal to me. So I'm guessing he's got five cards in hand, so he's probably got something else he wants to cast. Okay, he can... He didn't recast that. So, kind of, kind of curious what he might have at instant speed. Okay, we don't have... Yeah, we've still only got the larder zombie in, zombie in the graveyard. Um... Something bad is about to happen to Ludovic, I think. But I'm I am just gonna uh I'm gonna go for it anyway. The bounding wolf, that's that's what I forgot about. Yeah. Alright. No problem. Play the uh, the full cost Bahamoth. I was thinking it was you know it's one less removal spell for the Bahamoth. We'll see what Red Green can do about seven six. I have it just play a, just play a six five basically, and that that does the job. Uh, Baneblade Scoundrel seems good here. Um, if we Rotten Reunion, we turn it back to daytime, and then this guy's a lot less scary. I think we do, I think that's what we want to do. Take out the wolf. And the turn. Rise of the Ants, nice. Let's go ahead and remove that uh, that card. We don't want to see two more Ants. So, 
Yep, he can just double block and kill the Behemoth. Are we okay with that is the question. Yeah, I think I, I'm okay with that. I'll just attack with both of these. Imagine if I still had that uh, fading hope. This would be that'd be pretty good. So, if we look at the battlefield, read this card again. Each creature blocking it gets minus one, minus one till end of turn. So, I should be able to trade with a tavern ruffian, which that seems good to me. One less big creature on the board. And he survives because he doesn't have enough damage. And if I hadn't cast that, we'd, we'd have gone to nighttime, which might have been a might have been a good idea. But he obviously has a deck full of uh, werewolves. Okay, four, three. You can discard a card and draw a card with this. That's that's quite handy in this part of the game. It's probably drawing extra lands. I think I just want to infernal grasp that. Because you can just trade off with a scoundrel. That can be a 5-1 first strike when it attacks. And play a 7 drop. Wow, burn down the house, going for the devils, very interesting. So they can actually triple block the behemoth and then kill it. Swing with the component collector as well. Uh, maybe, maybe both zombies. So you can triple block there. Just block the component collector and take 8 damage if he wants. 
I can pump that to three, so... Gonna trade with a decay zombie? No, surely not. So those are gonna... She's, uh, that sting is gonna go to zero toughness when you do that. This is basically the same as the flanking ability I remember from uh, Mirage. On tap. Yeah, take action. Oh, get something back. Gets burned down the house back, but he can't afford to cast it. But here's the thing. He can just sweep the board with five damage next turn. Oh, this does an extra point of damage. That's uh, an, an extra line of text on this card. Oh, he's got a Bounding Wolf, but you haven't blocked. Uh, you've taken damage, so Arrogant Outlaw wins the game. There we go. And we get the Cosmetic. Nice. Invasion of Ravnica. Uh, let's have a quick look at the deck. So, I did just see that I had two Dimir rares, Ludovic Necrogenius and Siphon Insight. We never actually saw any of Siphon Insight in uh, in any of the, the I think, four games. But Ludovic was almost ever-present. and like We got to do some quite quite cool things make him a 9-9 even though he couldn't it couldn't win us the game at that point but it was quite fun yeah uh we had in that last game we realized the only the only we couldn't seem to mill any creatures i think i'd only milled larder zombie if, if i uh and if i transformed him with the larder zombie he'd get defender and won't be able to attack so that was a funny uh, interaction there. I don't think we ever played the Zolada Zombie either. Yeah, Fading Hope. I did a. I used a Fading Hope to stop six damage in the last game from a werewolf. I'm not sure if that was the best ch best choice. We could probably probably could have soaked up the damage and um, used it more effectively later. Rotten Reunion was uh, actually really good. There's so many targets that are important to um, exile from the graveyard. We used the Awakener once, that was, uh, that was a pretty good card. Oh, yeah, really good removal in this uh, com uh, color combination as well. Got two locked in the cemetery in blue as well. Uh, so, you know, six removal spells, something like that, plus a dissipate. So yeah, seven removal spells and some big creatures as well to just uh, finish off the game. And it's quite funny the number of times I had to, I played a turn f I played Organ Hoarder to try and find my fifth land. About happened about three times. Yeah, so that was that was pretty fun. That's a pretty good that was a pretty good sealed deck I gotta say. Nice curve to it.
anyway, I think that is a video, so uh, thanks for watching.